Hello YouTube, Byron with Splitting Slices. And in the second part of our three-part series on the Forstner bit, we're going to have a small history lesson. We're going to talk about the man and the development of the tool. Now Benjamin Forstner was the son of German immigrants and was born in 1834 to a family that had moved and settled in the Pennsylvania area known as Harmony Colony. Now, the Forstners were a large family. They were craftsmen and part of a utopian religious sect of the area. All of the men would make woodworking tools and would make tools for the women to create clothing. So they made spinning wheels and wood looms for the women to create fabrics. Now, the family lived in the Harmony Colony area until the mid-1850s where a new pastor and new sect leader named William Keel, K-E-I-L, wanted to create his own utopian colony in Missouri. So he had a group of villagers move with him to Missouri in the mid-1850s. Now, they stayed there for about five to six years and created a new colony until 1861, which was the beginning of the U.S. Civil War. And William soon realized that if he was going to save his new colony, they would need to move west and get away from the violence. And so he had the villagers stock up on supplies, make Conestoga wagons, and decided to move the entire colony west. It took him two years to move out to an area called Aurora, Oregon, where they began their new colony in 1863. Now, Benjamin lived and worked in Aurora, Oregon for two years until 1865, where he decided he wanted to change his life and become a gunsmith. He saw an opportunity in the Pacific Northwest to both build new weapons and repair old ones that existed in the area. And so he decided to move to Salem, Oregon to learn his craft in the city. It was soon after that that he met his wife, Louisa Snyder, in Salem, they were married, they had one foster daughter, and for the next 20 years he developed his craft as well as developed the basic design of the Forstner bit. In 1874 he filed his first patent and received it from the patent office, and he followed up with an 1886 modified claim for improvements to the bit. Now in 1876, two years after his first patent, he showed his product at the Centennial Exhibition and along with a showing in 1893 at the World's Fair in Chicago, managed to land two major manufacturing contracts where he licensed the development of his tool to both Colt Manufacturing Company out of Hartford, Connecticut and the Bridgeport Gun Implements Company. Now, these two companies made him a wealthy man from commissions on the license of his new tool. He finally died in 1893 after becoming a dried goods seller for the last two years of his life. He also owned a large 150-acre farm of both crops and timber, and unfortunately his wife soon followed six months later. But he basically was the definition of the American dream, the son of an immigrant who ended up becoming a wealthy man due to his opportunity-seeking and design of the Forstner bit. In our next series, we're going to go ahead and show you two applications of the Forstner bit in cabinet building.